That was my signature. Though the guy was not looking at me. But today I had thought somebody else would sing on my behalf because they have a better voice. They are more organized than I am. And I will still share my time with, with them so that um, the five minutes or so this gentleman can sing uh, uh, and give the Lord the praise. Patrick, Patrick, and, uh, Patrick Nakaya and his wife Joki, they are some of the ministers that minister together with uh, a Bishop Masinde Inumoja. He's a singer, he has a CD, and we had agreed secretly, or through what you call SMS, that he's going to sing one of his, one of his songs if it is there. Amen. I think he's organizing himself for that. Meanwhile, he can come and be saying Jumbo Jumbo as uh, the song is placed there. This gentleman, we went to Mombasa. You remember when I went to help Mombasa Church? He's one of the people that went with me. There were three of them. One was the pastor. The other one was the minister of worship, who's this one. The other one was the minister for finance, who handled the finances for that church. And for that one year, that church grew in every area, both in worship, in giving, and in membership. Karibu Patrick, can we give you a mic if there is any? Please. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm so delighted to be here in Deliverance Church, Zimmerman. Uh, and I'm so blessed to see the work that is going on. The last time I was here, I, I, there were not these changes, and I really bless the Lord for what I'm seeing. Amen. I love your pastor, Bishop Jimmy Kimani. When we went to Mombasa, he's the one who took us there. And uh, by the grace of God, we managed to do whatever we did. And we really want to bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. I've worked with Bishop J.B. Masinde for quite a while. I think about 24 years. I went there when I was 18 years. You can guess my age. Yeah, we had the and uh, the Lord has blessed me there. I got a wife there, Caroline Joki, and we've been married for the last 11 years. We have two sons, Sean and Bob, and the third one is coming on the way. He's arriving this March. Amen. So I really want to, I want to just sing one song. I don't know if the peer guy, where is he? No, he is. is he the summer? Tell him which number? Number six. <laughs> you hear? You hear me, eh? Okay. So I want to do this song. It simply says, the Lord is good. Give thanks to the Lord. He is good. His love endures forever. Amen? Amen. And you can get my CD after the service. I couldn't get my sleeves, but I'm a man of excellence when it comes to music. So they just gave it for 150 shillings after the service. Amen. Amen. You're waiting. Patrick, don't you worry, it is hidden somewhere there. Okay. Track number six. Ume jawa, ume jawa, 
Genesis chapter 21, verse 33 and 34, and welcome to this fantastic uh, fast service, and you look wow, you look fresh. I was telling some people who came here at 6 o'clock for prayer, that uh, maybe we need to come fast, worship fast, hear the word fast, and then go break the fast. And uh, oh, they never said a lot of amen, though, but... Uh, <laughs> We want to thank God for this early service. I'm still wondering whether the scripture will come on the screen, but if it doesn't, we'll still continue. But I want to say this, there are times in life which are simply difficult to tolerate, isn't it? Sometimes which are so hard, so difficult, there are battles that you're fighting. There are times that the battles appears like they're going to overcome you. There are long nights that you struggle at night and uh, you are your spouse, if you're married, they're enjoying the bliss, and occasionally they might dream a few dreams and you have to keep on stopping them, but you are awake the whole night. Sometimes there are storms to endure, storms that you have to weather them. But every time you get to that place, I think the best place for you and I to go is the book of Job, so that we can see this man that struggled in life but kept on trusting the Almighty God. How to enjoy the rest areas of life, that's what I want to share with you. Actually, when I sat there, the, the, the topic changed. And maybe if you can change the topic with me, it's taking advantage of the time of rest. That's what came. Because sometimes we don't take advantage of the time that God has given us of rest. Despite of how we feel sometimes, life isn't all that bad. You know why? Because we would all have to admit that there are times when God takes us through what uh, the psalmist 23 tells us. Sometimes of cool, still waters. Sometimes they take us through the green pastures. So life is not that bad after all. Amen. But it is the taking of advantage of those times. If you're a driver like myself, I tell my wife that to take advantage. If you are driving and there is a queue of many vehicles... You take advantage if you see one in the middle of a taking because they'll shield you. You don't wait until there is nobody. No, when they are shielded because there is a long queue and you are coming from Mombasa and there are eight trucks. If you see one ahead, take off. What you do, you take off and aim to enter where that one has come out. You take advantage. But those drivers that take no advantage, they keep on waiting until it is clear on the way. But sometimes... It takes a while before you can be alone on the road, taking advantage. If you can put for me Genesis 21, verse 33 and 34, is what I want to read. So remember, despite of how you feel, do you, Genesis, did I say Genesis? Yeah, yeah, there, there. Because I thought, did I say 22, did I say 3? Did I? It was sometimes of those senior moments. I keep on looking here and there. Abraham, planted a tamarisk tree in Bathsheba. And there he called upon the name of the Lord, the eternal God. Verse 34. And Abraham stayed in the land of the feasting for a long time. So the Lord takes us to moments of still, quiet waters. But when that time comes, I think it is good for us to take the advantage of those moments. In my life, I know that Times like those happen. I could be going through one at the moment. But just as surely as the troubles of life are sent into our lives, even those times that are restful come to us also to take advantage. Because bad times and hard times come to us to mature us. They come to help us grow. They come to strengthen us. And you see, so that the rest of the life and the period that we live 
we could be stronger awaiting the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So in this chapter, the whole of that chapter, if you would read at your own time, we are looking at part of uh, Abraham's journey. The ups and down, and Abraham had a few. You talk about Abraham lying about his wife. You talk about Abraham uh, being tricked by his wife. You talked about Abraham, this man who was thought to go without his parents and he goes with his father. You talk about a man who had ups and down. There is famine here. He goes to Egypt. You talk about a man who had ups and down. Then you're talking about Abraham. But in this chapter, we turn around and we find rest. It is like he's coming for a rest area. He is coming to a place where he can take advantage of what God wants to do. So how do you use the rest areas of life, the place that you rest? How do you take advantage of those moments of rest? And I'm talking to people here that sometimes, you know, amen, but I swear, Yani life is good, it's cool, isn't it? They say it's cool. Kwa sababu, ukiingiza mkono mfuko inatoka kitu. But there are times ukiingiza inatoka nothing. Oh, sorry. But there are times that you, you, the end of the month comes and disappears without you noticing it because you still have it. Actually, you go one week before looking at the ATM, you know? There are those months and they are great, they come. But there are some months at the end, the month comes so early, it ends so fast. And then you wonder, what did I do? Who stole my money? You call your wife. The, are you sure? You know, those, those are the times that every 10 shillings that falls under the bed, you know where it fell. Amazing, isn't it? You know the 20 shillings that fell in the car, but there are times they fall, you don't even worry, don't care. There are guys who see them when they are washing and you bless them. Actually, when they tell you they found it, you say, bless you. <laughs> but there are times that when you are washing, you tell them, nakuna shilingi kumi niyanguka pale, tafadhali ukitoa, you know why? Because those are not as restful moments as the other time. But when you are time for rest comes, I'm saying take advantage. Amen. I hope I'm talking to people here who know that there are those times that um, everything appears so well. Oh, there is this harambe, how much you give. And you smile. Oh, hallelujah. But there are times that somebody comes to you and you... You actually want to give him them a story. It's only the Lord who stops us from giving a story. That I have more problem than you. You know, I'm going through this and going through the other. So Abraham comes to a time of rest. And I pray that God can help us to take advantage of those times of rest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You have, you and your spouse, maybe you quarrel, you run up and down, maybe you speak words. But there are time, a time comes and... Oh, there is a lot of bees in the house. Take advantage of that. Go for honeymoon at that time. Develop something that is great. Even plan to buy a plot in Rai. That, those are the times. Take advantage. I'm talking to people. Please take advantage of those quiet times. Some of you that are not married, if those quiet times and there is money, go back to school. Because that is the opportunities that God is giving us. Because it comes once and then you will be saying a story like this. One time. You know, and, and I don't know whether it is only myself. You know, me, I go back to the 70 and I lament a little bit about how I use some of the money that I made. I, I, I. Because I was a rest. You know, you get to a rest and God gives you two years of rest. But the only thing I did, and I have told you this, some of you maybe, some of you and you don't know, I bought a music system. Oh, you, uh, you have had that? Yes. And it was expensive. And if you wanted to take away the cockroaches, you only went to 10. Put volume 10. And then you stand at the door, and all the cockroaches, because the, 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 the house is shaking, you know, they boom, 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 and all the cockroaches. And then I never took advantage of the time. I still have that music system somewhere. I think I have the Ginanda. But now nobody can buy it today. You imagine? Because I never took advantage of the restful moment. I would have used it for a while, then released it to somebody else. 
ile ya kaseti ilikuwa na vitu zote kaseti nini lakini ilikuweka tena maspika ilikuwa poa kwa hiyo nakaa kando tu na hesabu sasa shida ni kwa sababu natoka zinaingia kwa jirani ukiwa na amani zinarudi tena but take advantage how do you take advantage when you are at peace and there are five things that i'm going to bring to you and then i will finish and i hope that god is going to help each one of you i'm speaking to myself actually as much i'm speaking to you that god i will take advantage every time and i'm telling him god forgive me the many times that i have not taken advantage of the situation that has happened you know for you that also know that when we came here the owner of this land was so kind to me if there is a man that god had connected to me was that man the whole of this up to where the the power is was cultivation he had cultivated uh, maize actually it will be lower here is where the the the, the cow pen was he had cows here the first two plots we bought were his cow or whatever but he told me this pastor anytime you need land come but you know hey you know vijana now i thought four plots were big you know and more was with me i thought it was great so more bought one of the plot here where we are building the church and uh, <laughs> i had to buy it from him <laughs> and then these four i had to buy from other people but there was an old man who was willing not to sell me one plot but to sell me acres but i never took the advantage the old man died we buried him i never even asked for my own plot so after he has gone i'm buying a little plot from his son 50 by 50 above here So I'm telling God never again. At my times of peace, I'm going to take advantage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At my time of peace and rest, I'm going to take advantage and do all that I can do. Verse number that 3, the Bible says if you can bring it back, verse number that 33. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there he called upon the name of the Lord, the eternal God. The middle part of that little passage there is a is a little there is a little something that is happening because this man had no rest for a long time but now he has rest and he's taking advantage of the rest by choosing the place to stay. So the first point that I want to bring to you you know if God gives you a time for rest then it is time for you to take your habitation to the best place make sure where you inhabit is a good place make sure that it is the time of peace that you locate you relocate i know some of you understand what i'm talking about because when you have quarrels and disagreement even a million shillings unaweza kuikula na iishe na msifanye kitu mukibishana tu you know i normally say this at uh, one time we thought we were going to build a house for my my mother and we borrowed some money actually 10000 because it was going to cost 10000 go to jabine a whole lorry of bao it was less than 5000 by mishimani na mabati and build a very good house for my mother and we agreed with alice but when we got the money we argued to kaikula <laughs> i refuse to argue again when i have a project <laughs> i refuse to put some when i have a project please let's not argue yeah. let's not disagree let's keep on moving yeah. and the thing that we have done our days with alice it is when we have agreed and we can go very far sometimes we wonder hapa tumefikisha na nani what has pushed us is when we have chosen the time of rest to look at the place where we are going to stay i'm talking to people here that god has given you some moments of rest this is the time to look for the best place that you can inhabit a place you can go nyinyi ambao mnabishanana na argument nyingi kwa nyumba kama kuna amani saa hii ndio niweni dai kama kuna amani saa hii ndio niweni plot kama kuna amani saa hii pangeni kuzaa mtoto 
kama kuna amani saa hii panga kurudisha uh, mkono kwa wazazi wa mke wako kama kuna amani saa hii amua ndio wakati wa kufanya investment The, when kuna amani amua kwenda china eh hey, kuna amani enda dubai kwa biashara when there is peace i'm talking about even those that are here and god has given you peace you have a little shilling please go back to school it is not always like that Abraham here he is going to build himself around a well a place where there is a source of life a place where he can even plant a tree a place where he will be there. the transition that we find here is is actually found from verse 22 to 31 where there are seven sheep which was a testimony that the well belonged to Abraham. That well was like he was buying it. It was like he was releasing a ship to Abimelech. It is like he was trying to say, let's get into a deal, into a covenant that this well belongs to me. And Abraham then goes to that place called Beersheba, which means the well of sevenfold oath, because of the seven sheep that he agreed with Abimelech about it. Well, had a vast importance to men like Abraham because they needed water themselves, water for their animals, they needed water for their flocks, they needed water. They needed water as they rested, they needed water. You know, my brother, my sister, when there are a lot of challenges in your life, it is harder to concentrate on your walk with the Lord. When you are thinking of the debts that you have, when you are thinking of the pain that you are going through, when you are going through sorrows, and sometimes even prayer, some of us have confessed, Bishop, I can't even pray. You start praying, you, you cry. You start praying, you think about the pain, the sorrow, you think about the landlord that is coming to kick you out of the house. At that time, you cannot concentrate. But we should take advantage then when there come moments. Because those are the times that we can pray more, we can, we can, we can, we can invest more, and we can talk about the goodness of the Lord. What I'm advocating here today is that in life, there are times that you are at rest. There are times that you are cool. There are times that, my goodness, and I pray that I can have more of those good times when I am at rest. You don't know how it feels when you are frustrated because everything in your house gets frustrated with you. Kuku, bata, mama, watoto, chushu, everybody. And, and you become mood and you transfer the mood to everybody, even the house guard. Oh, I pray that God can save us from those moments. By when rest comes, let's do what we can do like Abraham did. We can, we can ever learn to settle down in best places of his blessing during the good time. Rest for times of life, we will not be so easily blown, of course, when the adverse weeks of trials and afflictions uh, begin to blow against us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm saying at the time of rest, take advantage of the time of rest. Still in verse 22 and, and 32, 32, I also find something else that Abraham is trying, and I also want to say this is what we need to do. Insulating ourselves or yourself with his promises. Insulating yourself or myself with the promise. The promises that God has given us. Insulating. Yani, why are insulation? Inawekwa kakava ako ka plastic. Yeah? Ili waya isibuzwe. Yani, nasisi tujifunike na baraka na ahadi za mungu. At that time, insulate yourself because when that rest will not be there because of your insulation of the promises of God, amen, you can keep on shouting and declaring the goodness of the Lord even in your life. These verses tell of the covenant made between Abraham and Abimelech concerning their mutual interest. Abimelech was concerned about his safety. Abraham was concerned about his wealth. At the end of this uh, uh, meeting with Abimelech, Abraham could dwell with his safety within the borders of Abimelech land because he had the promises of his covenant in verse 23. I'm trying to say 
that brother there are promises that God has given us insulate yourself with those amen, amen. insulate yourself with those cover yourself with the promises of God I'm saying if you know any look at your neighbor tell them tell them one of the promises that God has given you I mean wake up tell them are you sure you don't have any you are looking at me like you have nothing oh my goodness that is what you need to insulate yourself with that is what you need to insulate yourself with. That promise. Don't you worry about his. Maybe your neighbor's promise look like, wow. Don't you worry. Yours is yours. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If God has promised you a VW and your neighbor a Mercedes, all the promises are the same. Actually, in Magali. So you come out, you come out, you come out, Unampigia hune na kumbia, wee, ata mimi ni menipa. Kwa kambi yungi gali. Ama umeona mtu na kumbia, wee, mtu wako kagali na kumbia, hee, 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 nisi kagali. Diyo tunakuraga kwangu. Hii diyo nasomesha watoto. You know, whatever God has promised you, please insulate yourself with the promise. So that your life, when you have some hard times, you will be insulated by the promise of God. Some of us, are here today, not because everything is okay, but we are insulated with the promise of God. We know that tomorrow is better, and where I stand, I'm not corrupt, I'm going to what God has promised me. Bless the name of the Lord. We also know that where the promises are, it is not just there for you to pick, there are battles for me to fight. I want to insulate myself with the promise of God and the promises of God. Bless the name of the Lord. Use best areas of life as time to meditate on the great promises of the Lord. Let those truths feed your soul. Then when troublesome times come, you will find that they are steadied by his word and by his great promises. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I'm so glad that God has allowed me to insulate myself with his promises. Oh, my goodness. You know, life, even some of you that are married, insulate your marriage with the promises of God. It, it is shaken. And some of you say, no, I'm going. Where are you going? Insulate yourself with the promises of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I like the story that was being told a long time ago. That the old men were very wise. I don't know whether you know they were wise. Actually, somebody said that I said it somewhere yesterday. An old man seated here can tell you how Broadway looks. And some of you don't know there was a place called Broadway. Why? Because he has gone through Broadway for a long time. You know, one time we went to Malindi and we arrived in Mombasa late at night. We were driving and um, we were the home cell. We were driving, we had many cars. And I think I delayed a little bit because my wife lands and takes off. Not driving, she doesn't arrive. She lands, takes off. That's a story for another day. So she landed, I took her. Now, to get to Malindi, it is night and I don't know the road at night. You take advantage, how do you take advantage? Unaona matatu inuwe kupita. Sawa. Bas. Nasema sawa. Speed ya naenda, unaenda hiyo. Kipiga break, unaona kuna bump. Hiyo tu. All, all, all what you need is to concentrate on him. Akipiga break, unaona mata. Sawa. Unajua kuna bump. Naona piga yako. Umpiti, ata akibeba wa customer, naona slow down. Anakuja tena na ku... Take advantage, friends, of your rest. That's what I'm saying. Take advantage. Take advantage. Take advantage. And at that's the time when you take the word of God, you insulate yourself with the word of God at the time of rest so that when hard times and difficult times come, you can quote the word of the Lord. For instance, we believe in eternal security and that his promise to his children but under the right kind of pressure, you might begin to feel that you are lost again. But if you have covered yourself, that I am saved and secure in the mighty name of Jesus. Thirdly, verse number 33 where we read, for involving yourself with this worship. At your rest time, take time to worship the Lord. Abraham used this calm period of life to call on the name of the Lord. He used this time to deepen his relationship with the Lord. 
they certainly equipped him for the battles that still lay ahead. Why is it that so many people wait until the bottom falls out to call on the Lord? And when the problems come, the best time to worship him and your worship has haina haijachanganyika is when you are calm. It's good to be calm when we are worshiping the Lord. And I tell you, I don't know about you. Me, when I'm under stress, nainua mikono, alafu kabla sijaenda sana na kamea shetani. Wewe naingia worship, and I know some of you here, even this morning, as others were worshipping, you found yourself, Shindwe! because you, you enter into the holies of the holies for a few minutes, and then you remember, Abana, Shindwe Ikitu. What I'm saying, at your restful time, please go and stay there. Why? You need it. Because there are times that become very difficult. Ama hapa huko na unajua hauna sapa. So you lift up your hands. Oh, you thank God. Oh, thank you God for this day. Then, Bwana, kama hauta tupauna leo. Leo, he, situ tutalala wapi. And then you, because some of you, your friends are here, you look whether they are in. Tamtafuta nani. Uyo lazima ataniangushia chapa leo. Ama it doesn't happen to you. It happens to me also. I want to look for people who can greet me with a Pentecostal handshake. So it happens. It happens to you. It happens to me. That's why it is important for us to take our moments. We involve ourselves in worship. We worship him. We worship him. The best time to worship him is when we are. Don't wait until some calamity. Don't wait until you are in trouble. Don't wait until trials have come. Worship him. Bless the name of the Lord. Worship him. Learn to worship the Lord. Learn to worship the Lord. Remember what I say that uh, the, the bad times and hard times will come. You know, I have waited a few people and there are people actually who tell you sit as a if you you know, and the truth of the matter is did you know you can be rich, but you cannot buy me a cup of tea? Because you don't have cash flow. Did you know that? That you can say, Yo mombe ni yangu, ye shamba ni yangu, yo gari ni yangu, nenuruliye chai. Samba, eh, kumeari pika jo. But why? Because it is cash flow. The issue of cash flow is, 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 is the thing. What was I saying? A uh, wedding. Yeah, wedding. So, and before I say that, I remember to be seeing wedding someone, Uko Kirito. And then the place that this man did not want to say is until death do part. So they, he would go in good times, in bad times, in sickness, and in health. In? Oh, yeah. That guy, I waited that guy. <laughs> <laughs> because I do that very well in riches and poverty until death the guy would say hold on bishop hapo tuseme tuachie hapo tu hiyo tuache tuseme amen if you don't take this part we can't take this and leave this one so there are people who say no that we can't conf confess but let me tell you this when God is asking you, what do you want? Is that not confused, confessor? He wants you to confess to him and say, I'm having pain. But I know some of you, I don't know, you didn't murienda. Never say it. It is not faith to say, no, I'm not saying that I like it. I'm just saying this is where I am. But inside me, I know who can heal me and who can set me free. And I also know, listen to me, there are times that unakula nyama ukitaka. But there are times, utake, usitake, haipatikani. Siku ni puche ni zinafungagwa, ama duwewe uonagi. But those times happen. I don't know about you, but I know about me. Kuna wakati, njaha usiki, kama ule mwimbaji ya liimba, mwisho wa mwezi, hakuna mtu usikia njaha. Wengine ya mku usikia yu wimbo, ilikuwa ikimbo wakati, ni twisty. Eh? Mwisho wa mwezi, wanini usikia njaha? Ni kwa sababu, chapa. You can eat whatever 
you want. But let all go and behold when you don't have it. Every smell you can tell. Kule kuku, buko chapati, kule ugali. Dio ni nyama choma. Yari. Why? Because you have nothing and actually it causes you to the pain. But I'm saying when God has blessed you. When God has blessed you. When you are at rest, please cover yourself and invest. Amen. Amen. Invest. That's, that's what I, that's the, the fourth point. Please invest. Invest and Abraham invested in the future. I know some of you want to invest where you can get dividend immediately. But I, I want to tell you, please invest even when you know for sure. Hiyo muti ni mepanda, siwezi kula matunda yake. Lakini invest for your children. Do you know, do you know the old people? I also like the old people. Have you seen old people? Everywhere they see a kamuti. Wana toaga, wana beba. Ata my mother. Ata aid. Hehehe. Ana mbeba metia maembe na kwetu tumebarikiwa sana. Kwetu karate tumebarikiwa sana. Maembe. Oh, hallelujah. Maembe. Na maliku. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. But my mother would carry all trees. I ask. Ma nime hukura. Dokesha uko mene eka yube. And there are some trees that she has planted and they are doing well because she has faith for herself. But the trees are not hers. She, she might not even enjoy them. Abraham planted a tree. Not for himself. He could not shelter himself there. It was Isaac and it was for Esau and Jacob and their children. But he invested. I'm saying, my brother, my sister, at your time of rest when everything is well and you have a few shillings, invest, not for yourself, but invest. Don't your neighbor tell the neighbor? Yeah. Invest. invest. I know some of you young people, you, you said invest for what? Invest. Would you in Dubiangu? Ukiyo wa dada abaya amenunua kanyumba. Kawa west. It is a kanyu. Na wewe dugu, hauna. Si nipo wa sadu? Ah, wadugu. So la unasema wezi kumuwa kwa sabu wana nyumba. How good it is dada ukiolewa na ndugu. Amebarikuwa na kagari. Na mkitoka Bible study na kupera lift na kupera kapaka kwako. I'm saying please don't fear to invest. Dada usiogope kununua shamba, kujenga nyumba, usiogope invest. After all, akikataa kuja utakuwa na nyumba ya kukaa. Najua nasema hivi nikikazia kitu kwa zao najua kuna wandugu Dada akiwa dia mebarikiwa. Shida. Dugu anakaa pale anaona dada anamupropose. Alafu dada akitoka anaigia kwa gali. Dugu anaanza kuwa na. Apana. 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 But I'm saying invest in your good times. Bless the name of the Lord. Invest in your good times. And that's what our church has also tried to do. When we have little shillings, we have invested in those times. And you can see what that investment is doing even as we enlarge our Sunday school, our nursery classes and baby class. Uh, investment is key. I want to finish by sharing the last that I think is very, very important and very crucial for us. Inventories are good. You sit back for inventorying your blessings. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. At your time when you are resting is the time that you count your blessings. You know why you count them? So that when the devil tells you you are not blessed, you count them. Or you count them again. You tell the devil you missed it actually. I had rest the last week and I counted all my blessings. You know, I'm talking to people here. Actually, you are millionaires only that you don't know because you never count. Amen. Sit down and count your blessing. At Zinanini, eh? count your blessing. Some of you are great, I don't know, multiple millionaires. Why? Because you have never sat down to count 
your blessings. Count your blessings. Abraham had the time to sit back and count his blessings. Do an inventory of the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Those peaceful days unfolded for Abraham. He was able to spend the time listening to the laughter of Isaac and Sarah. He was able to contemplate all that the Lord had done for him and how God has blessed his life. It was time for him to inventory uh, the blessings of the Lord. Be thankful for the blessing of the Lord in the days when life is good. It's a great way to prepare for those hard times. Because you know what? Are those hard times what, what you normally say is, if God was able to take me through high school, he's able to take me through the university. Yeah. It's the same story. If God has been able to take me through the university, he's able to get me to the master's level. Yeah. If God was able to put me from point A, he's the same God who can take me to point B. And you do that inventory. Why I'm saying this is because the worst Christian is a Christian who has forgotten what God has done. Yani unalia machozi. Na hiyo machozi ni machozi ambayo si moto ni baridi. Unajua machozi moto nayo inakuwa nzuri. Si ni machozi baridi bado unasikia baridi huko. Karibu uchomeka huko na hiyo maji baridi. But I want to thank God. That every time I want to count my blessings. I want to name one by one. One by one. Bless the name of the Lord. So for you that God has given you rest at this time, sit down and count your blessings. Take time like Abraham did. So that those times which will be hard, you can stand on the roof, rooftop and tell the devil, you are a liar. Where is Shetan in Mwongo? Kathitu tunamaliza. Yeah. Where is Shetan in Mwongo? Kama mimi nilisoma kutoka karate ga kulinuli, hata watoto wangu watasoma kutoka zima mana. Are you hearing? Yes. Because that is the whole truth. If I know what God has done in the past, I can stand on it for tomorrow. Yes. That's why I look good. That's why I walk like I have everything. Actually, people think I have everything. It's only my wife who knows. But people here think I have brought in And I don't know. But you know what? I don't tell them I don't have. It's my investment. I have invested elsewhere. Why? Because I know tomorrow they will bring it and I can afford at that time. But so at that time when you don't have, please learn. Learn. And I say again, learn. Put an inventory of your blessing. Hallelujah. Some of you are married 30 years. And like I, I listened, as, you know, oh my God. And sometimes when you hear stories come, and when stories come, you want to give them. And when you give them, a pastor, one of the pastors here, my friend, one Francis wonders, <laughs> May God help us to put it right there. Hallelujah. And 30, 40 years in marriage, and that when you are married 50 years, is what you want to divorce? I mean, I wonder. When you could have kid, when you could have kid, because you are just now you are 19. You need to come to your own and watch that. At 70, at the guy is 70, the lady is 68. And they go for divorce papers. And then you wonder, Wuka, where are you going? What is happening? At 70, I want to look back when I got married. And I want to count all the blessings that the Lord has brought me. Because then, when the hard times come, I can be able stand. Bless the name of the Lord. I don't know where you are, my brother, my sister. I don't know what your struggle is. But if in any of those areas is where you fall short, maybe at the time of peace, you have missed that inhabiting of that restful place, that good place. Or maybe now you are at that place and you are wondering, 
you are at the address, you are wondering, what should I do? And you need somebody to agree with you. Or maybe where you are at the time of peace, you have lacked to worship. And now you have fallen back again and you, can, you feel bitter about it, that you missed their point. Maybe somebody can also pray with you. Maybe some of you are here, actually, you don't know that God has blessed you. Because when you prayed for a new suit he gave you, you forgot. Now you are crying like, God has never given me. Mungu wa jenipatia kitu. You know that, that kind of a story that normally we hear from families. Una nitukia kwa nini ujalinulia kiatu. Na hiyo umevaa. Nani alikuwa mekunulia. It's only that you want another one now, but I'm about you one. I want the ministry team to come here. Very, very quickly. You know yourself. Maybe I spoke to you and you are saying yes. I need someone to pray with me because I need to be a person who can put an inventory, who can put something down. And you are saying yes, I want that kind of prayer this morning. Come quickly. We are just about to finish. We will not wait for too long. Remember the second service is starting in a little while. So if you come quickly, just join somebody. Come, come hold somebody's hand. Let them pray with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come quickly if you're coming. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just come quickly. Join your hands with someone. At the time of rest, tell God, God, next time you give me rest, I want to do some, some things. Maybe the Lord has given you rest, but you don't know what to do with investing. You have no idea you need God's wisdom. Come and somebody will pray for you as you invest in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord.